Have you ever wondered how life began on our beautiful blue planet? It's a question as infinite as the cosmos, a riddle that has intrigued us for millennia. From the first humans gazing up at the stars to the modern scientists in their labs, we've always sought to understand our origins. We're about to delve into the labyrinth of theories and hypotheses that have been proposed throughout human history. So fasten your seatbelts as we journey through time and explore the various theories about the origin of life. Our quest for understanding begins with the ancient civilizations. Long before we had the tools of modern science, our ancestors sought to explain the mystery of life. From the fertile river valleys of the ancient Sumerians to the towering pyramids of the Egyptians, each civilization spun its own creation myths. These narratives, rich with gods and cosmic forces, were their first attempts to make sense of the world around them. They saw life as a divine gift, a miraculous event born from the whims of the gods. In ancient Greece, philosophers began to propose more naturalistic explanations. Anaximander, a pre-Socratic philosopher, suggested that life originated from the primal chaos of the cosmos. He envisioned a process where simpler forms of life gradually evolved into more complex ones, a notion that resonates with our modern understanding of evolution. Moving forward to the Middle Ages, we encounter the theory of spontaneous generation. This theory suggested that life could spontaneously emerge from non-living matter. Rats were thought to arise from garbage, while flies were believed to be born from rotting meat. But the spontaneous generation theory was not without its critics. In the 17th century, Francesco Redi, an Italian physician and poet, conducted an experiment with meat and flies that challenged this theory. His findings laid the groundwork for what we now know as biogenesis, the principle that life arises from existing life. The theories of ancient civilizations and the Middle Ages have been replaced by more sophisticated models, based on rigorous scientific research. Yet, they played a crucial role in our journey to understand the origin of life. They sparked our curiosity, encouraged us to question, and laid the foundation for scientific inquiry. While these theories may seem simplistic now, they were the stepping stones to our modern understanding. These ancient ideas, although flawed, were the seeds of thought that grew into our present knowledge. They remind us that the quest for understanding is a journey, one that is paved with both success and failure, but always leading us forward to greater discovery. Enter Charles Darwin, the man who would change the way we think about life forever. Darwin, a name synonymous with evolution, presented a proposition that would revolutionize our understanding of life's origin and development. In the mid-19th century, Darwin proposed the theory of natural selection, which he meticulously detailed in his seminal work, on the origin of species. He argued that all species of life descended from common ancestors, evolving through a process he dubbed natural selection. He proposed that nature, like a discerning gardener, selects the best adapted creatures to survive and reproduce. Over countless generations, this process shapes the species, favoring traits that enhance survival and reproduction while discarding those that do not. This was a radical shift from the existing belief in the unchanging nature of species. It was an audacious proposal, one that challenged the established norms and sparked fierce debates. Yet, it was this theory that provided a logical, scientific explanation for the enormous diversity of life on our planet. Darwin's idea was immensely powerful, resonating beyond the confines of biology to influence other disciplines, from psychology to sociology. It provided a framework for understanding why we are the way we are and why life around us is the way it is. Darwin's theory of evolution gave us a new lens through which to view the world, but the question of life's initial spark remained. Darwin had shown us the how of life's development, but the why and when of life's beginning were still cloaked in mystery. Imagine the early Earth, a hot, chaotic place, yet teeming with potential. As the newfound planet cooled down, oceans formed, creating a vast, unexplored expanse. This environment was far from being lifeless. Instead, it was a cocktail of ingredients, a primordial soup, if you will, filled with the raw materials needed for life. This is the setting for the theory of abiogenesis, the idea that life on Earth arose spontaneously from inanimate matter. 
This theory proposes that over billions of years, the organic molecules in this primordial soup, such as simple sugars and amino acids, underwent chemical reactions under the influence of Earth's natural energy sources. These included lightning and ultraviolet radiation from the sun. The result? Complex molecules capable of replication and evolution, the precursors to life as we know it. Now, you might be wondering, is there any evidence to support this dramatic claim? Enter the Miller-Urey experiment, a groundbreaking study conducted in the mid-20th century. Scientists Stanley Miller and Harold Urey sought to recreate Earth's early conditions in a laboratory setting. They filled a closed system with water, methane, ammonia and hydrogen, simulating the Earth's early atmosphere. Then they introduced a continuous electrical discharge mimicking the effects of lightning. After just one week, they discovered that their artificial primordial soup had produced amino acids, the building blocks of proteins and life itself. This experiment provided compelling evidence for the theory of abiogenesis, suggesting that the raw materials for life could indeed spontaneously form under the right conditions. However, it's important to note that the leap from simple organic molecules to complex, self-replicating life forms is a vast one and much about this process remains unknown. The primordial soup theory brought us closer to understanding life's origins, but the story doesn't end here. We still have a long journey ahead to unravel the complete story of how life began on our blue planet. What if life didn't start on Earth at all? Now let's venture into the realms of the cosmos, where the theory of panspermia proposes a fascinating possibility. Panspermia, a term derived from the Greek words pan, meaning all, and sperma, meaning seed, suggests that life on Earth could have been seeded from elsewhere in the universe. This theory posits that microscopic life forms or the precursors to life could have been carried to Earth aboard meteorites, comets, or other celestial bodies. Imagine this, billions of years ago, a meteorite hurtling through the vast emptiness of space carrying within it the seeds of life. Upon reaching Earth, these seeds could have found the right conditions to flourish, leading to the evolution of life as we know it. This theory does not necessarily contradict the more traditionally accepted theories of life's origins, such as the primordial soup theory. Instead, it expands upon them, suggesting that the ingredients for life might not be limited to our home planet. While this theory might seem like something out of a science fiction novel, it's not entirely baseless. Certain extremophiles, organisms that can survive in extreme conditions, have been found to withstand the harsh conditions of space. This discovery lends some credibility to the idea of panspermia. The idea of life coming from the stars may seem far-fetched, but it's a theory that some scientists seriously consider. Life, it seems, may indeed be a cosmic affair. In the world of science, the quest for understanding never ends. We've journeyed through time, explored ancient theories, dived into Darwin's thoughts, stirred the primordial soup, and even ventured into extraterrestrial territories. But the story doesn't end there. The quest continues with modern theories that further explore life's origins. The RNA world hypothesis, for instance, proposes a world dominated by RNA molecules before DNA and proteins. RNA, or ribonucleic acid, is a close cousin to DNA, and it carries out many roles in our cells, including acting as a messenger and participating in protein synthesis. The theory suggests that RNA not only carried genetic information, but also catalyzed chemical reactions, making it a likely precursor to life as we know it. What's fascinating about this theory is that it solves the chicken and egg paradox that puzzled scientists for years. You see, DNA requires proteins to form, but proteins in turn need DNA. So, which came first? The RNA world hypothesis steps in, suggesting that RNA could have been a bridge between the two, existing before both DNA and proteins. Then there's the deep sea vent theory, which posits that life began at hydrothermal vents in the ocean floor. These vents spew out mineral-laden water heated by the Earth's mantle, creating an environment rich in the chemicals necessary for life. The theory suggests that these extreme conditions could have catalyzed the formation of simple organic molecules, leading to the first life forms. These theories, like those before them, are pieces of a puzzle we're still trying to solve.
Each offers a glimpse into the possible paths that led to the complex web of life we see today. And while they might not provide a definitive answer, they do offer a valuable insight into the processes that might have sparked life. While we may never know the exact process that sparked life on Earth, the journey of discovery is a testament to our enduring curiosity. And so, the quest for understanding continues, fueled by our insatiable thirst for knowledge and the tantalizing mystery of life's origins. Our journey through the theories of life's origins has been a wild ride. We've traveled through time, exploring ancient theories, considering Darwin's bold proposition, pondering the primordial soup, and even venturing into the extraterrestrial. It's a testament to the enduring curiosity of humankind, our relentless pursuit of knowledge. But remember, this journey isn't over. Our understanding is always evolving, always expanding. As we continue to explore and learn, who knows what fascinating discoveries await us in the future.